In this video, we're going to look at creating faded edges in Blender, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and today we're going to add to our Learning Blender Slowly playlist by talking about fading edges on body parts. Now, I've done several videos on Blender at this point. I think this is number 17, maybe. And I've gotten a lot of comments or questions about this specific thing, this faded edge. You can see this on a lot of modern cars. BMW has been doing it for quite a while, but this is a common design theme that happens. So what we're gonna be talking about in this video covers three main ways to make these sort of transition or creased edges. And then we're gonna get into doing that and, and talking about some of the pitfalls or some of the pros and cons that might happen with each of these methods. Now, if you wanna follow along, I suggest you go ahead and just make a simple shape to follow along, just like I have here. Started with a single face and just sort of worked around a shape that would resemble the side of a car. Now, if you aren't able to just generate a shape like this, then applying these more advanced edges is probably not something you're ready for just yet. And that doesn't mean that you shouldn't try, but you should be comfortable at least with making some basic shapes and working with the tools within Blender. I'm not using the most current version of Blender. I think 4.0 is out now, but we're not covering any advanced tools that have, have sort of showed up in Blender. Uh, anything since 2.8 will probably be more than okay. So to get started, the first method that I'm gonna talk about is the crease method. So we're gonna start by editing and I'm gonna use the knife tool, which is K on the keyboard. And I'm gonna cross over some edges to highlight some problems that we're gonna run into. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a single creased edge. And I'm gonna do this by using my edge selection. And I'm gonna take this rear edge here and I'm gonna move this out in X. Now, if I just take a look at the shape, it doesn't really give me that creased edge look because what I wanna do is I wanna add a mean crease value. Now, if you don't see this menu, N on the keyboard will bring it out or this little arrow here, you can click on it. But what we're looking at is the properties of the object that we have selected. So mean crease, we're gonna increase up to 0.9 or so. And then the next segment over, we're gonna put this one a little bit lower, maybe 0.7. Then this last one here, 0.4. And we're gonna leave this, the last edge or the leading edge here, we're gonna leave that at zero. So essentially what we're doing is we're giving it a higher crease weight. We are essentially driving the tangency closer to that edge, and we're changing that as we go further down the edge. Now, this is an okay method. There's not really anything wrong with this method. One thing that this does well is it preserves the topology. So when we're talking about doing things like adding modifiers or adding a bunch of control edges on something. When we do that, then we start to change the topology of the model. But if we're simply increasing or decreasing that creased edge, what we're doing is we're changing the tangency or the weight as it goes into and out of that edge. So as you subdivide this, it will begin to exaggerate any problems in that topology. You can see that we've got a star point here and here. And that is only based on the fact that we're crossing over an edge. So when we go back into edit mode, we are crossing over an edge here and we are creating a triangle. If you spend a little bit of time and you retopologize your model so that you don't have triangles there, then you can get around some of these issues. But if you're trying to keep an extremely low polygon model and just have some sort of body line like this, then using a creased edge is honestly, it's a, it's a pretty easy thing to do without really adding a ton of control loops. The next method here is very similar and that's gonna be using a bevel weight. I'm just gonna create a very similar shape, just drag this edge forward. And then the same thing, we're gonna take this edge and we're gonna just simply move it out in X. But then instead of using the mean crease weight, we're gonna use the mean bevel weight. Now, one of the problems associated with this method is that we need to use a bevel modifier. Nothing's gonna happen unless we use that bevel modifier. So that can be a pro or a con, depending on how you're looking at it. Another thing that we need to keep in mind is that if we don't carry this beveled weight all the way to the edge, even if it's a very small number, then we're gonna have some topology problems. So I'm gonna leave that last one at zero for now to highlight that, and then we'll talk about it. 
So we need to go to our modifiers. We need to add a bevel modifier. It has to be before our subdivision surface. And we'll change the limit method to weight. As soon as we change it to weight, then we can start to control the segments and these values here. A smaller value will have a tighter transition and a larger value will have a softer transition. And what we're actually doing here, if we look at the, the underlying geometry, what we're doing here is we're controlling a bevel that is increasing or decreasing in distance. When we increase or decrease the number of segments, what we're doing here is we're adding additional control loops or edges in there. So this can be a little bit tricky, but the more edges we add, the flatter that transition is gonna be. And as I mentioned, the problem is this sort of just ends wherever our beveled edge ends. So if we wanna carry that to the end, we need to have at least a very small weight there, and then we won't have that problem with it just sort of ending in the middle. But once again, the number of segments is gonna control that, and then this width value, the smaller it is, the tighter that transition is, because essentially what we're doing is we're bringing those control loops together. Now, if you were to do this just on one of these other edges, if we were to add a bevel, this is essentially what we're doing with the bevel weight and the bevel modifier. However, at this point, we would be doing it with the additional edges, which means that we can't toggle it on and off. So I don't really like that method of using the actual bevel on the, the subdivision, but here we can toggle it on and off, and that can be a nice thing to play around with shapes but again, you do have that problem where it, it can't really just end. You need to carry it all the way to the edge of your surface. And the last method here is the method that I prefer, and that is to just add additional edge loops to control it however you want. Now, this takes a little bit more work, and there are some potential problems that you run into. In this case, I have to add a secondary edge on my own, and I'll actually, I'll back out of that and I'll show you why. If I just do Control R to add a new loop, you can see that the new loop is gonna stop because it won't be able to create that going across this intersection here. So we will have to use the knife tool at least at some point. And then the way that we go back about this is we use G and G to tighten up those transitions. What we can do is this end one, we can sort of pull it apart if we want it to fade away. And then we need to take these edges and move them out in 3D. So if I want that fade to happen, I'm gonna say G, X, and sort of pull those out. And now I've manually created that. Now, as I mentioned, this is my preferred method, but this is not something you can toggle on and off like the bevel weight, and you can't go back and really tweak it easily like the crease weight. But this does give us a lot of options for how we can play around with the geometry. So for example, if I just add another edge in here, and I take the these back three edges, move them inward, and then maybe I take this entire edge here and I'll use the crease weight here. This allows me to make some pretty unique shapes quickly and the shadows and reflections on those are generally going to be very good. We don't have as many issues going across those edges, but we do still have triangles there. So if we turn off our optimal display, you can still see that we still have star points and we're really playing around with what's happening under the surface there. But if you're just looking for maybe renders or visualization and you're not worried about the total number of polygons, this might be a great method. So out of these three approaches, the creased and the beveled weight will keep the number of polygons lower, whereas the inserting an edge loop, this is going to increase the number of polygons. But again, it gives us a little bit more fine control over what's happening. Now, this doesn't really tackle the original question of these sort of faded edges, but the method is still the same. You still run into the same problems. If you're using a bevel weight, you have to carry it all the way to the edge. If you're using the crease method, you don't have to carry it to the edge. It's a little bit cleaner. Again, we'll keep the polygon count a little bit lower. And the, the last method of inserting your own edge loops, this is just something where we have to carry those out and move them where we want them. So we're gonna play around with those three examples here, just repeating what we've done, but in this case, we're gonna try this sort of crisscross pattern. So the way that we do this is we're gonna, again, use the knife tool. I am gonna carry this one over and start it coming down there. And then again, with the knife tool, I'm gonna to start here and sort of work my way up and then sort of fade it up here. Now, this first method of using the crease weight, I wanna take 
a couple of these edges and I'm gonna move them out in X, so sort of start to pull them out. And then at the start, I'm gonna use a very similar number, somewhere around 0.9. And as we move inward, maybe use 0.7. And then as we get a little bit further, again, a smaller number fading away. So that gives us the look that we're going for, but we may need to carry that crease weight a bit higher. I didn't pull these edges out, but again, we can make simple changes and just pull those out a bit more and we can get that shape. So the higher the crease weight, the quicker that transition is gonna be. If that transition happens relatively close to another edge, so for example, this triangle, what you're gonna end up seeing is that it looks like it's a bit tighter there, which means that we need to go back, I'm gonna turn on x-ray mode here. We need to go back and maybe manually manipulate some of these vertices. So again, it takes a little bit of work, but you can get pretty good results out of it. The next method, again, is very similar. I'm gonna use the knife tool. I'm gonna to carry it across up here, start to bring it down, and we'll repeat that. Uh, this one coming back a little bit and start to go up there. Uh, so once again, I'm gonna use the bevel weight. We'll do Control GX and maybe pull that out. We'll do the same thing here. Hold down Control GX, pull that out. And then at the front, we're gonna do a bevel weight somewhere around 0.95, do the same thing here. And then just gradually reduce it as we go through. So we'll set these ones a little bit lower. And we're gonna run into basically the same issue. And remember that with bevel weight, we really need to carry that all the way to the edge. So I'm gonna do a very small bevel weight on the edges, which will of course affect what's going on at the edge of that surface. So now I'm gonna add the bevel modifier Make sure it's before my subdivision surface. We're gonna change our limit method to weight. I'm gonna increase this to two and then increase that value a little bit. And you can see, again, very similar, but obviously it's, it's different because we have to carry that bevel all the way. We could go back to this one and we could add a crease weight here, a very small value. And then we could play around with the location of any of these, moving them out and carrying the crease a little bit further. But essentially we're looking at a very similar method between both of them, either crease weight or bevel weight. However, the bevel does have to carry all the way to the edge unless you, or else you kind of start to run into those topology problems. And the last method again is going to be inserting edge loops. So we're gonna carry this forward. We're gonna carry it down and we're gonna do the same thing down here. So just sort of working my way back and bring that up. But then we need to insert a second edge loop. And again, Control R will let us do this to a certain extent, but because we're crossing over edges, you can see that it's only going so far. So generally what I do is I just use the knife tool again, and then I will just use G and G to slide the edge. So we're just gonna go ahead and add that one. We'll do the same thing again, keeping them relatively close. You might need to zoom in to be able to do this, but I'm trying to, to keep everything in view. Um, you can see it added an extra edge there. So I'm gonna hit delete and dissolve edges. And then I'll take, let's see, these two, G and G to slide them close together. Uh, this one I'll slide in a little bit and we'll do the same thing down here. G and G, G, G. And then we can start to move them. So again, I'm gonna hold down control. I'll probably move all the way out to here and G and X, pull that out and we'll do the same thing here. G and X, pull that out. And then again, the closer that we put those, the tighter that transition is going to be. So if I wanted this transition to be tighter up here, then I would just take these two edges and push them closer together and that'll give me a little bit sharper transition. Now, once again, I feel personally that inserting the edge loops is going to give me the best results. I think that the reflections look better. I think that you just generally have more control over the shape, but it's certainly not the easiest method. The easiest method is probably just to use a crease. The crease does work pretty well. It doesn't add any extra polygons to the mix. You just simply have to think about those creases, where they're going, and what the weights need to be. 
You can do creases on individual vertices. So for example, I could come up here and I could add a vertex crease weight and that would essentially just be like you're pinching that and pulling it out. So you can do that at a specific vertex, but uh, for the most part, that's not really what we're focusing on here. So out of all these methods, is there another method that you use to add these types of creases? Is this something that you use in your modeling approach? Does the bevel approach seem to make the most sense because you can turn it on and off? Or does inserting edge loops really come into play? Now, obviously, the range of people using Blender, there is quite a different task if you're making an asset for, say, a video game versus trying to make a highly detailed model just for some renders and visualizations. But that's all that we want to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.